In this section, we'll cover modern portfolio theory and tangential topics. So strap yourselves in, we're in for a very, very long ride. So what are we gonna cover in this section? Well, first off, we're gonna start with correlation and covariance because you need to know what those are, how you calculate them, etc. if we're going to go any further. Next, we're going to cover portfolio objectives, efficiency and how we define it, and then also we'll talk about portfolio variance and standard deviation. After that, we're going to introduce modern portfolio theory, or MPT, and I'll discuss how we optimize a portfolio based on those concepts that are covered in modern portfolio theory. After that, I'll introduce the capital asset pricing model, or CAPM, which is one of the most important formulas in all of finance. And then we'll apply it and talk about some of its assumptions and then talk about how we can build a model that extends past cap m so we'll start to talk about the fama french three factor model the carhartt model which is four factors and maybe some other models and then finally we'll talk about some market anomalies now let's start our statistics review by discussing covariance covariance measures the degree to which two assets move together the higher the covariance the more positively that two random variables move together if covariance of two random variables equals zero, then we say that the random variables are independent of one another and their stock returns will not be related to each other. Negative covariance indicates that high values of one random variable are likely to occur when there are low values of the other random variable. Next, we have correlation. Correlation can be considered scaled covariance. It represents how random variables move with respect to one another. Correlation ranges from negative 1 to positive 1, with positive 1 indicating that the two random variables are perfectly positively correlated with one another, while negative 1 indicates that the two random variables are perfectly negatively correlated with one another. Correlation coefficients of 0 indicate independence between the two random variables. If we know the covariance between two random variables, we can divide this number, this covariance, by the standard deviations of the two random variables to calculate our correlation coefficient. So let's take a look at what positive and negative correlation looks like. Positive correlation indicates two series tend to move together in the same direction. Negative correlation indicates that two series are likely to move in opposite directions from one another. Notice here that we have two random variables that are perfectly positively correlated in the bottom left-hand corner of our screen. Uh, this perfect positive correlation indicates that a rise in random variable P will always have a comparable rise in the value of random variable M. With perfectly negatively correlated random variables, like those that we have in the bottom right-hand corner of our screen, an increase in N will always have a corresponding decrease in M. Perfectly negatively correlated random variables are something that we're always on the lookout for, since we can use the negative correlation to achieve a guaranteed return with no risk. Now, there are some final points you should know about covariance and correlation. First, the covariance of any random variable with itself is simply the variance of that random variable. Also, the correlation of a random variable with itself is equal to 1, indicating perfectly positive correlation. Finally, the variance of the quantity of a random variable plus another random variable is equal to the variance of random variable 1 plus the variance of random variable 2 plus 2 times the covariance between the two random variables. We'll use this formula when we want to calculate the variance of an entire portfolio. We'll modify it to some extent, however. Now, let's calculate the correlation and covariance of two stocks' returns in Excel. So I have here an example. We have two securities, Security 1 and Security 2, and we have some basic information about these two securities. So let's use Excel to calculate the covariance and the correlation between these two random variables. So let's start with the covariance. Now, our covariance formula in Excel is going to be covariance.s. So equals covariance.s. And this indicates that we're using the sample covariance, since we only have a sample of the stock returns of these two securities. So 
What we're going to do is we're going to highlight the returns of stock one, put a comma, and then highlight the returns of stock two. Close our parentheses, hit enter, and our covariance between security one and security two is 0 0.00235. Now our correlation coefficient is going to be simply calculated using the Corel function. So equals C-O-R-R-E-L. And again, we just highlight the two arrays or two series of data points that we want to use. So in this case, I will highlight array one or the returns of stock one over these years. And then I will put a comma and then highlight our returns for stock two, close our parentheses, and now we have our correlation coefficient. Now, what this correlation coefficient of 0 0.11036 indicates is that we have some positive correlation between these two random variables. In other words, when we see high values uh, for the returns of security one, it's likely that security two is also going to have higher values. So in other words, the returns of these two stocks are positively correlated with one another. Now let's recap. First, we talked about the fact that covariance and correlation both indicate the mutual relationship between two random variables. You also just saw that both covariance and correlation can be positive or negative. Covariance is unbounded, meaning it can take the value of anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity, but correlation is bounded at negative one and positive one. Negative one indicating perfectly negatively correlated and one indicating perfectly positive correlation. And we did finally mention that independent random variables have a correlation coefficient of zero. And so with that, I'm going to end this video and I will see you on the next video.